Wichita Mountains is an absolute photographer's paradise. There's anything and everything you'd want to shoot here, from mountain tops, beautiful rock formations, lakeside scenes, a number, a plethora of images here that you could capture. So I've been here for a couple days and I captured a few images already. So grab your gear and come on and hang out with me. Let's find out if, uh, if I captured any award winners. Southwest Oklahoma is home to the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge, just outside the Lawton Fort Seal area. With about 60,000 acres of mixed grass prairie, ancient granite mountains, and freshwater lakes and streams, the Wichita Mountains are a landscape photographer's dream. Also, if you're a wildlife photographer, the refuge is home to free-roaming herds of bison, longhorn, and Rocky Mountain elk. And of course, hiking and camping play a significant role in what makes this location so attractive. In addition to capturing award-winning images, landscape photography provides an avenue to connect with nature and embrace the outdoors. The landscape photography experience lays a path to see the world in a different light. No pun intended. It allows us to put aside our daily routines and anxieties, engage in activities that challenge our creative minds, and fill our thoughts with anticipation and hopes of capturing an extraordinary and spectacular moment in time that may actually transcend our very lives for generations. Decades from now, perhaps a few of us may be fortunate enough to join the ranks of the many greats like Ansel Adams. I have no delusions of being among those fortunate few, but one can always dream. Well, it's a bit windy up here, but I hiked a uh, little baldy trail to the top of the summit, and uh, it's down by uh, Quanta Parker Dam. And well, anyway, it's beautiful up here. It's, it's windy, but uh, magnificent. I think it's a, it's a view of what the Wild West used to look like. It's just for miles, all you can see is just, wow, stunning, stunning. I don't know if it's gonna make a, a fantastic image though. I, I think uh, a sunset image certainly it just really lacks a subject. I mean, it's a great grand vista, but it doesn't have something to really anchor your eyes on. I mean, there's just not a, a real subject in it. I think I can make some of the, uh, uh, the structures up here serve as a good foreground, but just not really an interesting composition. I think a sunrise might be better, but uh, a little difficult getting up here early enough to capture that. I think I could probably hike up at dawn. It's, it's maybe a 10, 15 minute hike up. It's not too bad. And it looks like there's a couple different ways up, so it might be a little easier, easier route. It, just one spot was a little difficult for me, but most of the trail was pretty easy. But anyway, uh, I have a little spot picked out by, down by the dam, and I think it's a little difficult composition. The sky prediction is okay this evening, and I really wanna capture some of that sky that I had this morning, that red glow, so I'm hopeful of that. Anyway, I'm gonna set up here and enjoy the view for a little bit, then I'm gonna hike back down and I'll see you on the other end. Well, I've got my composition lined up and uh, got uh, about 30 minutes to sunset. Just looking at the sky, I just don't think it's gonna do anything special. And uh, actually I was lucky to really get a spot. I mean, there's a dozen cars here and, and uh, yeah, quite a few people. But uh, this is the spot that I had seen uh, earlier and I wanted to come back and kind of line up and uh, yeah, you can kind of see that here. I just really like this composition. I like the rocks in the foreground and kind of the opening just provides like a leading line um, as the viewer kind of looks at the rocks and right through the rocks into the background and that's kind of what I was going for but I really wanted a um, kind of a lit sky. So uh, last night <clears throat> it pretty much uh, lit up red around uh, all the way around the sky here so I was kind of hoping and it's better predictions for tonight so I was kind of hoping it, it lights up but that doesn't look like it so I think this is about the best uh, best there is I captured a an image earlier kind of a little warm light on uh, kind of this foreground rock right here and um, yeah I, I think it's okay but I think this is a composition that really has to work with the light so um, the light's super important in this one you know, nevertheless, it's, it's just beautiful out here. And despite there being a lot of people, it's really calm and peaceful. And, um, you know, I'm just really enjoying it. Pleasant evening. Um, I would say 
you know, a composition is only half of the puzzle. So the other half is light. So you, you really can't have one without the other. You've got great light, but no composition. It's, it's not a recipe for success. But if you've got a great composition and the wrong light, that's not a recipe for success either. So I think you have to have both to, to really pull it off. And that's what I was hoping to do. So uh, there's still a little bit of time left and that sky could light up. Um, I think it, it might have worked earlier um, when the sun was a little bit higher in the sky if I had more cloud coverage, I think, to provide more, more texture and um, just, uh, yeah, I think the texture would have added something to the, to the composition. So, but anyway, I'm in, I don't know, you guys be the judge. I'll show the image and uh, let me know what you think. But still more time. It's not over until it's over. And I toyed with this composition, uh, some variety of it, actually a little bit further back and some, some of the rocks kind of crossing and providing a leading line to kind of zigzag the viewer through the image into the main subject, which is the uh, kind of the mountains in the background. But uh, I don't know, choices, choices in landscape photography. I really had my heart set on this composition, but I'll go with the best one. You know, sometimes even though you you may not get the, the light that you want. You should always keep your options open because sometimes the light, you know, the colors change and it casts a, a warm hue on, on the, your subject and in a way that maybe you didn't think about. And it's kind of, kind of helping with the foreground right now. Um, and so those things might be, might be beneficial too. So don't be, don't be to the point, I think, where you just can't change your mind and flip up compositions or even flip up um, your idea of what the perfect lighting should be or is. So uh, I guess uh, what I'm trying to say is be open-minded. And uh, it's never over till it's over. So, uh, you know, I always wait until the light's gone. Now the light's changing a little bit. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and see if that red just kind of crosses over. It's actually adding a little bit more contrast and texture into the sky right now, and I'm really, really kind of liking that. The wind picked up a little bit more and it's put some ripples in the water, which I really don't like. I was really enjoying that placid look. But sometimes you can have your cake and eat it too. You know, sometimes it's just lining up the composition with all the elements, the light, the wind. There's, uh, there's a lot to this. And I think uh, if you're new to landscape photography and, and you're up for a challenge, of course, that's probably why you're into landscape photography uh, if you're new, because uh, you're up for a challenge. And it can be challenging, but it's so rewarding. And patience always pays off in the end. So I may not get it today. Maybe it's tomorrow. Maybe it's never, but at least, uh, you know, you get out and you give it a shot. But it's the process of landscape photography that we enjoy. And it's certainly the process that I enjoy in the outdoors. Well, you know the old saying, it's never over till it's over. Well, that's true tonight. So uh, I got, to, actually I got everything I wanted. So this image should be, uh, should be pretty good, um, hopefully, if the composition is right. So, um, and, and I like the composition, but you never really know until you get back and post and take a look at it. But if the composition was right, uh, I, I really got everything. I got the placid water, I, I got the great skies, I got color, texture in the sky, clouds. Not an abundance of clouds, but nevertheless, they'll do. But I, and I got that red hue that I was looking for that I didn't think was gonna happen. So I really got it all. So I should be pretty happy. So I guess the lessons learned, um, yeah, it's never over till it's over. So always best to hang out. Another good tip I would give, uh, if you're a new photographer, certainly really important to think about if, if you're a new photographer because you really don't think about these things until later, but 
sometimes when you get to a scene, there might be two or three compositions that really catch your eye. And I really wanted to, I had my composition set with my tripod and everything, and I really wanted to pull away and go for another because I didn't think the sky was, was going to go my, my way. So yeah, I didn't, I just, I stuck, uh, I stuck it out, left my tripod planted and concentrated on the, the one composition that I really came here to capture. So I think that's a good lesson learned. It's a good lesson learned is, is if you, you're focusing on one composition, stick with that composition. That doesn't mean that you can't change uh, last minute because sometimes you have to make that last minute call. But uh, you know, in this particular case, I, I think I'll be pretty happy with this image and I'm glad that I stuck it out. So, well, I guess I'm gonna head back to camp and uh, get some water. Um, I need some water. And uh, just kind of relax a little bit, maybe turn in evening or turn in early if the music isn't blaring, and I'm sure it is. And I uh, don't know what I'm going to do in the morning, um, but I'm sure I'm going to get up and capture an image somewhere. So I'll check the uh, weather tonight and see what the predictions are. I might come back here again. You know, I mentioned uh, earlier that uh, in last week's video, actually, that you, you can't really oversaturate an area with images. Conditions change. It's always different. And it always will be. And I think that you could take a, an infinite number of images and never catch, never capture the same thing twice. So uh, that's also something to keep in mind is don't be scared to go back to the same location. Don't feel like you have to, you've been to a location, you got one image, even if it's an award winner, you're happy with it. Well, that, that location's just over for you. Don't think like that. Think like, wow, I really got that one. Maybe I'm happy with that. That's great. But there's other compositions there too. So. You know, saturating an area with image images, I think it's a good idea. All right, well, I guess I'll uh, guess I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. I'm back at Quanta Parker Lake. And uh, looking around for composition, the sky was okay this morning. Just, uh, I mean, it was nice color. Just wasn't enough of it. Not enough cloud coverage. So I really kind of turned my sights from shooting into the sun to shooting away from the sun, and it hopefully catch some warm, warm morning light. Maybe cast on some of these rock formations. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm kind of scow around and uh, and look for a composition. Well, I found the composition here. I don't think it's an award winner, but it's okay. Kind of got the uh, the tree here in the foreground and the rocks on the opposite side, bringing some balance to the uh, mountains in the background. Now, one of the uh, interesting things about a situation like this is you got a couple options. I think the, the tendency is to get a wide angle and just get in close to the uh, to the tree and the to the foreground, and and that's that's okay. But in a situation where you're trying to get some mountains in the background. When you do that, anything that's in the background is going to appear much smaller than in the foreground. So really, truly, you're better off to get back away and maybe get a longer lens and compress the scene. So rather than shooting a 14 millimeter, getting back and shooting maybe 40, 50, or maybe even 70 millimeters is a better option because what you do is you, you have this compression effect where you compress the background and the foreground, although they appear closer together, um, it, it makes the background larger and the, more proportional to what you're actually seeing. And that's always what I'm trying to do is kind of recreate what I'm actually seeing out here. So the, the sky didn't pan out, so I didn't end up shooting into the sun, but I'm kind of waiting for a little bit more light to come in and maybe cast a little warm light on the back of the mountains. Hopefully I can get that. Maybe on the foreground on the rocks here, everything's angled east towards the sun and, and I'll get that warm glow on kind of the right hand side of my image. Anyway, that's my thought this morning and that's what I'm going for. Oh yeah, something else I'll tell you. If you stand here and stare at it, as the light gradually increases, you may not even notice it. So you're better off to, you know, maybe scour around look up for, looking for some other compositions and just kind of check in every couple, every few minutes well don't go too long you'll miss the whole event but 
you know, just turn your eyes away and look for other things and then just kind of, you know, glance back. So I see some clouds coming in and a little bit more light than, uh, than before. So just a little tip. I had this tip right on the tip of my tongue, but I forgot what I was going to say. But anyway, was it a tip on my tongue? Tip, tip of my tongue. Here's the tip. Anyway, just plan. So focus stacking. I think a lot of people are, especially if you're new, focus stacking seems like a daunting task, but it's really not. And even the cameras, this D850 does kind of an auto progress of focus stacking. I seldomly use that. I, I normally just pick my focus points and so that I know where I'm focused at and I don't rely on the camera to do it. Although it seems like pretty good results. But anyway, so the thing is, is just take a couple of images when you're shooting something like this and you've got a real far distant background and, and the foreground, they're just far apart. And especially with water in the middle, it's a perfect focus, focus stacking opportunity because what you can do is focus on the background and then focus on the foreground. And then in Photoshop, those are easily blended together. So, uh, and look, even if you're, you find focus stacking challenging, take a couple of images. And even though you, maybe you don't need them, you've got them in the bag so that you can use them later. Well, you know, landscape photography is all about a little chance and a lot of patience. You know, like this morning, uh, I really couldn't get the light that I wanted on the background because the sun was blocked by clouds. But it never really cleared up until just now. And the thing about now is it's almost 8 o'clock. Sunrise was at 7, so about an hour after sunrise. Although the light's still good, it's just provide it, it's just casting some harder shadows on the uh, on the mountain. And so it's those harder shadows that I don't really like in the image. I like kind of a softer transition in the in the light effect between the shadows and the bright areas. And um, the the higher the sun goes up, the harsher the light becomes. And that's why morning and evening photography is so special, is because it's that those golden hours, that light is just perfect. And landscape photography, like I said, it's just a game of chance. Sometimes it's it's just waiting and conditions. And you know, this morning it was a battle between uh, gusts of wind and my desires to have you no know, motion blur in the trees and a placid lake, and then cloud coverage and the right the right uh, sky, the right light at the right time. It's all timing. So I think uh, landscape photography is not as easy as uh, people think, but you know, it's a passion. It's an experience. Landscape photography is an experience. And I think it's a part of you. You never see images or you never see things the same way when you're driving down the road and you see trees and mountaintops and you're always thinking about, man, I could frame that up. Um, oh, wow, I could capture that picture. You, you see the, the, the small details in, in a landscape. And I think as a landscape photographer, you know, certainly when I got really serious into landscape photography, I started seeing things differently. And you see a different world. All right, enough of that rambling. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. I was going to stay another day, but uh, no, that's it. Uh, I'm going to the pack out uh, tomorrow's weather's not going to look good but uh, hey if you're new to the channel if you're just getting here consider subscribing to the channel and uh, everybody hit that like button that really helps the channel out and uh, well if I don't see you down the road maybe I'll see you somewhere on the trail well I think the results were interesting but I won't judge these images instead I'm interested in your thoughts drop me a comment and let me know Wichita Fall, Wichita Mountains is an amazing place. Big open prairie, but there's mountains, there's, uh, I'm rambling on. Wichita, Wichita Mountains is an amazing, 
Wichita Mountains is an absolute paradise for a photographer. Wichita Mountains is an absolute cactus, anything that you'd want to photograph. So, uh, yeah, uh, what say next? There are just a number of activities that, uh, that you can do here. I'm gonna go about activities. I'm a landscape photographer. Wichita Mountains is an absolute...